in our practice problem here, we're looking at a ray of light that goes from air into olive oil and then from olive oil into water. We're asked to find the angle of refraction in the water and also to draw a diagram. We're actually gonna start with that draw diagram aspect. When I draw a ray diagram showing the path of light, I always start out by drawing my medium. In this case, we know that oil floats on water. And so I'm gonna draw these uh, two media with a nice big gap here, this top being air and then oil and then water. I suggest when you're drawing diagrams for problems where we're really ray diagrams in optics to draw your diagrams large so you have plenty of space to draw the path of the light and the necessary angles. We're told that there's an angle of incidence of 55 degrees and we know that all angles in optics are measured from the normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a normal line just for my first surface, the boundary between air and oil. And then I'm gonna draw my incoming light so that it makes an angle of approximately 55 degrees. It is totally fine for you to eyeball this. You don't have to use your protractor in this case unless the problem specifies that you must measure your angles accurately. I'll mark that angle in here, 55.6 degrees from the normal. Now we've learned that every time light hits a boundary between two different media, some of it reflects and typically some of it refracts into that second medium. So I'll start by drawing my reflected beam here. And this follows the law of reflection so that my angle of reflection is also 55.6 degrees. And I don't know my angle of refraction yet, but what I do know is that when we go from the higher, sorry, from a lower index of refraction, like the index of refraction for air, which is one, to a higher index of refraction, 1.47 for oil, my light is gonna bend toward the normal, or in other words, that angle in the oil is gonna be smaller than the angle in the air. This angle of refraction right here is an angle that we'll need to calculate using Snell's law, which we'll do in just a moment. I'll call this one here theta two. Now my light comes to the boundary between two more media. That means I get to draw another normal. That normal must be perpendicular to the surface at that point where the light hits the surface. That means that I have another reflected ray looking something like that, and a refracted ray. When it comes to that reflected ray, I'm okay with you just stopping it in the oil or with you continuing it, continuing it on to that oil air surface. For the refracted ray, we want to pay attention to the fact that we're going from a higher index of refraction, 1.47, to a lower index of refraction, 1.33. When that happens, we've learned that light bends away from the normal or that my angle here, I'll call this one theta three, should be larger than my angle of incidence right here. Now, if I think of some rules that we've learned previously uh, in geometry, then I know that this angle that I just marked, I'm showing with an arrow, is an alternate interior angle when compared to the angle that I've marked as theta two. That tells me that the two angles will be equal to each other. The reason for that being that my two normals are parallel to each other and they're cut by a transversal. And I know that those two normals are parallel to each other because those two surfaces, the one between air and oil and the one between oil and water are parallel to each other. So now that we've drawn a diagram showcasing the path that light will take, it's time to actually calculate singles. In each case, we'll be using Snell's law or N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine theta two. For my first example where um, that light goes from air into oil, 
that light is first traveling in air. So that index of refraction is one. And it makes an angle of incidence of 55.6 degrees with the normal when it is in air. My second medium that it travels into is oil, which has an N of 1.47. And we don't know the angle yet. That's the unknown quantity that we'll be solving for. A reminder of some math things that you've learned in a previous math class is that when we're solving for an angle that's inside a sine function, we have to use an inverse trig function, specifically the inverse sine function to calculate that angle. When I do so, I find that the angle ends up being 34.1 degrees. Again, making sure that your calculator is in degree mode as you're doing this. If you have difficulty with the math here, I'd be happy to help you out or you could talk to your math teacher. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that angle at that location where I said it was theta two. Oops, I accidentally erased my line. Let's try that again. Uh, we're just gonna draw that back in. Okay. So this angle right here, 34.1 degrees. And that means that this other theta two right here is also 34.1 degrees. Now, it's a good time to stop and do a quick check to see if that answer makes sense. We said that when we went from air into oil, that light should bend toward the normal. So theta two should be less than theta one. And that's what we found as we did the math. So that's a good indicator we've done the math correctly. Now I'm gonna look at the other boundary going from oil into water. So this time that light is starting in um, oil. And so my first index of refraction that I'll write will be 1.47. And when the light is in that oil, it makes an angle of 34.1 degrees with the normal. And then it's moving into water, so 1.33 times the sine, and I'm going to write that theta 3 here so that it's not confused with the theta 2 that we used before. Once again, solving for my unknown, using an inverse trig function, I find that theta 3 is equal to 38.3 degrees. And I'll go ahead and add that into my diagram here. And also doing that verification that that does make sense based on the theory that I had talked about before, because we said that um, this angle of refraction, this theta three should be greater than the angle of incidence. And it is because 38 is greater than 34. I'm also gonna go in here and make sure that I mark this angle of reflection, this 34.1 degrees in my diagram. So that's a great example of using Snell's law to um, calculate the specific angles, but also using the theory of what we know about refraction and reflection to uh, predict the path that light will take even before we do any calculations.